response, elicitation in biosensor data. Thank you. So good afternoon. I'm Lindsay Reynolds, and I'm a postdoc in the Interaction Design Lab at Cornell. Um, so today I'm happy to be talking to you about our note, which compares real-time representation of biosensor data compared with placebo feedback. So today I'll start by sharing our motivation and background for the Moodlight project, and then I'll briefly describe the Moodlight system before explaining our experimental design, presenting our results, and discussing takeaways for the CHI community. So our context for this study was better understanding college students and stress, although more broadly, stress is a growing problem for lots of people. We started our work by doing some design meetings with our campus's mental health service. In order to help students develop effective stress management techniques, therapists encouraged things like talk therapy, relaxation tools like meditation and breathing exercises, mindfulness practices. However, people can find these strategies extremely difficult to practice both in the clinic and at home. One clinician told us, Students can self-experiment with exercises, but I don't feel like they're actually reflecting on these experiments. It would be nice to have a way to help them reflect and provide convincing evidence that it works. Additionally, we were interested in the experience of college students because they're more likely to have technology-driven avoidance behaviors to stress, such as like watching Netflix rather than more accepted stress management techniques. With that in mind, we developed Moodlight to help college students practice developing healthy stress management practices. Um, so in order to avoid, to avoid avoidance behaviors like overuse of smartphones and laptops, and also to, with an aim to, as a tool to supplement these face-to-face -face therapy sessions, we developed Moodlight as an ambient lighting system. With Moodlight, um, they're colored light bulbs that change color based on an individual's level of arousal, which we measured using a wireless electrodermal uh, activity sensor. So EDA sensors, like the one in this photo, collect biometric data about an individual's current arousal level, and then this information is fed into a programmable lighting system, the Philips Hue bulbs, um, and fluctuations in arousal level are displayed in changes in the light's colors. Like similar effective computing systems, Moodlight was designed based on the assumption that increasing awareness about one's emotional states can have a positive effect on their mental health. So this notes a part of a larger study that we did exploring uses of mood light, but one of the things that we started out when wanting to do this study was a better understanding um, and establishing a baseline regarding the usefulness of receiving feedback based on one's current physiological level of relaxation. Therefore, um, our hypothesis was that participants would react more quickly when they were viewing feedback that was representative of their behavior, um, their, their emotional state, than um, when they were exposed to feedback that doesn't uh, represent that state. Um, so we tested this hypothesis use, using uh, within subjects experimental design. So we asked participants to try to change the color of the light bulb from red, uh, deep red to a deep blue as quickly as possible by relaxing. The longer the participant relaxes, the quicker the color moves towards blue. At the end of the, the trial was um, indicated by an audio cue. So in the solo condition, the light's hue started at a deep red and moved in the series of steps towards a deep blue um, each time the participant's level, arousal level decreased. However, we also had a placebo condition, so this is the, which we use as a control. Um, and in this case, the light's hue started at a deep red and moved according to a pre-recorded sequence which showed steady progression towards relaxation and wasn't influenced by the participant's arousal level at all. Um, the order, oops, sorry, the, uh, the order of the uh, trials were randomized um, and after each trial, um, participants completed a short questionnaire about their perceptions of the system. So in terms of the setup of the space, we conducted the study in two identical experiment rooms, which uh, contained no personal decorative items to help um, give participants nothing to focus on but the study. Um, in each space, there was a small table, um, some chairs, desk lamps, which contained the Philips Hue bulbs, um, and the Android phone that controlled the mood light system. Our participants were 62 college students, um, 39 of whom were female. Um, they ranged in age from 18 to 29 years um, and received either $5 in cash or course credit for participating in the study. Um, in pilot studies, we determined what pattern of relaxation felt like feeling fully relaxed to participants, and we used that as the benchmark for defining the end of the trial. Um, the metric we then used for evaluation was the time it took for participants to reach that fully relaxed state, which corresponded to the full blue light hue in the solo condition. Um, we performed linear mixed model analysis on the, these data, um, and we accounted for trial order, gender, um, their level of anxiety when they came in, um, and none of these variables were statistically significant. So in terms of our results, so to reiterate, um, our hypothesis was that participants would relax more quickly in the solo condition than they would in the placebo condition. But in fact, we found the exact opposite. 
um, participants completed the placebo trial more closely than the solo trial, which was really surprising to us considering that we had intended this condition as a control condition just to understand the baseline of receiving one's feedback in the first place. Um, so with this surprising result, one thing that we were really concerned about was whether participants knew that they couldn't control the lights in the placebo condition. Because if that was the case, then they might have relaxed more quickly because they were less concerned about being evaluated. Um, and so we checked for this possibility by analyzing participants' responses to the survey question, how much did you feel like you could control the output of the lights? Um, and so we found no difference in participants' responses following the placebo condition than in the solo condition. Um, obviously, I can't say for sure what's going on here because it's the lack of a difference, but it does provide some support for the idea that participants weren't aware that they couldn't control the lights in the placebo condition. Um, so in designing the mood light system, we were motivated in a, by a belief that promoting self-awareness um, is, a, is a key to effective stress management. But in this study, we found that the context of performing exercises to actively reduce stress, was, uh, it was better to receive feedback that suggests progress, even if that's not what's actually happening. Um, a finding like this challenges current affective computing trends that focus on real-time representation of emotional states and indicates that this is an area of effective computing that needs to be examined more deeply. Looking ahead to future work in this area, our group is planning to deploy the Moodlight system in a mental health clinic to evaluate its use as a supplemental face-to-face -face therapy. But there are also interesting opportunities to explore ways to combine this type of leading feedback with models that, uh, with models that positive change with this uh, effective feedback. Um, future research could also explore whether this effect we observe holds true for non-light types of feedback, um, such as sound or screen-based things. Um, additionally, one big area of future work concerns the ethical implications of the study, right? So what we did um, worked in an experimental setting. We could debrief participants, and we were clearly not providing therapy. Um, but what does this mean for designing tools that are going to be used um, in these very types of settings, right? Like, is it okay to, to mislead people when you're providing therapy? Um, I, I'm not going to want to say that. Um, and are there other ways that we can get the additional relaxation benefits that we saw with this leading feedback, but without having to mislead people? Um, and I think that's a really interesting area for exploration in the future. Um, there, are some uh, there are some limitations to the study that should be considered when interpreting these findings. Um, so again, given that we were interested in exploring stress among students, um, we relied on a student sample for this experiment. But these results may not extend to other populations. Additionally, um, we used an experimental method in which participants were aware that they were being evaluated, right? And so the effects seen here might not be generalizable to more natural patterns of stress and relaxation. Um, and finally, in the study, we used only one measure of arousal, the EDA. Um, and since any single measure has limitations, in the future studies, it would be helpful to include additional measures of arousal, like heart rate variability, to get a more compl complete picture of what's going on. So in conclusion, we started out with mood light to help with relaxation techniques through developing awareness of one's current state, with the belief that this awareness helps promote relaxation technique like, techniques like med meditation. However, the takeaway from the study flies in the face of this, suggesting that in some cases it may be better to, for people to be exposed to stimuli that suggest progress, even if that feedback isn't representative of what's really happening. So thank you for your time and attention, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Hello, thank you for the wonderful talk. My name is Alexander Mischerka from the University of Salzburg. Do you think that you stressed people by exposing them to this task and that increased their reaction time? Yeah. Or their stress um, level? Very possibly, right? So yeah, one important, um, that's why we wanted to make sure that we counterbalance things, so that if we were stressing people out in the beginning that we weren't accounting for that. Um, we had some filler tasks in between, um, so a lot of this is explained more in the paper, obviously, but we had some filler tasks in between the two sessions as a way of sort of bringing people down to the baseline. So we had them, you know, sort of answer random questions about short stories and something, you know, they would provide uh, explanations for how to pr get to directions on places on campus as a way of kind of helping them relax. Um, we looked at their levels of state and trait anxiety, so their overall levels of anxiety as a person as well as sort of their current feelings of anxiety in the moment, and that's some of the things we, we counted for in our model to try to do that right? Um, clearly that's a limitation of a study like this, right? Is that we're bringing people in, we're telling them to relax, like, relax now, right? It's, it's not easy or comfortable or normal to do, right? And so um, obviously an experimental method was good for being able to control the way we did, but I, I wouldn't want to rely just on this before, you know, it's, it's one of the big limitations around a stress study. So yeah, that's a great point.
Cosima Roginish, University of Bucharest. You have a really nice design and also a research design. Yes. I have the suspicion that maybe for some people it works if the lamp is honest, and for other people it works if the lamp is like hopeful. Yeah. So research-wise, I think maybe in the future if you have more respondents, you can do a cluster analysis and to see whether for some people they, maybe they improve better when there is realistic feedback and others improve better when there is this wishful feedback. This could help. That's and this point. would also sort of answer your ethical dilemma in that people could have the option of deciding how sincere, sincere the lamp should be, maybe like this robot in Interstellar, like I want you 90% honest <laughs> and <laughs> with a sense of humor or something. Right. No, that, um, you, you raise a great point. In fact, if I could go back and redo the study now, um, one condition I'd love to include is one where we provide the same leading feedback, but we tell participants. In this case, we're measuring your level of relaxation, but it has absolutely no influence on the light, right? Because that would be, gr it would be great it, if it turns out that just being able to have that, even if people know that that's not actually their feedback, if we can see the same effects and not have to sort of have inherently that level of deception would be wonderful. Um, I like the idea of, yeah, seeing whether people would sort of want to know and say, please don't, please don't tell me the truth, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay, yeah. and thank you to all our speakers today in the session.